Setting up a true NAS has always seemed daunting to me. That's why the first time I bought a NAS, I opted for the Blackmagic Design Cloud Store. This guy. But as discussed in my review, due to its expense, storage limitations, lack of configurability, and security options, for my clients at least, it ruled it out as a viable option for project sharing. So when it started to run out of space, I didn't want to drop more money on something with the same issues or get something without the cloud store's amazing throughput. What my research uncovered is there really isn't a lot of affordable choices out there offering solid, verifiable performance, especially when it comes to NVMe NASs on a budget which is why the Terramaster F8 Plus stood out to me, because it can be populated with eight NVMe drives and it is affordable. And it ships with a decent Intel N305 8-core i3 8-thread processor, which comes pre-configured with 16 gigs of DDR5 memory. And yes, the memory is user upgradable to 32 gigs, as are the disks with 64 terabyte of storage potential, which is a huge upside compared to my cloud store. As for the I.O., the Terramaster F8 has some handy ports, including 10 gigabit Ethernet for high-speed networking, a HDMI port to connect a screen for admin control, a couple of USB-C ports to add a keyboard, mouse for external USB-C expansion drive, which is pretty good considering the price. The F8 costs 634 bucks due to a $100 Amazon discount coupon, and these drives are only 50 euros each at the time putting the total spend at 1,034 euros, which is way cheaper than my eight terabyte cloud store or any unpopulated eight by device from Synology or QNAP. Like any NAS though, this does take a bit of time to set up. But even I, as a first time NAS user, didn't have any issues installing the NVMe hardware, finding the NAS on my network, installing the software, selecting a RAID configuration type, connecting the F8 to my system, upgrading its OS, creating user accounts, or getting it to communicate with Resolve. What I did notice in the setup process is the system is very flexible. You can choose between using the TOS 6 or a TrueNAS operating system and between the BTRFS and the EXT4 filing system. I chose to go with TOS 6 because it was easy. And the EXT4 file protocol as Mac OS is based on Linux and in theory should provide me the smoothest integration with my overall system. Creating a drive to access was also very easy. It only took a couple of minutes and before I knew it, my eight terabyte RAID zero was ready to go. Now this config isn't for everyone, but it suits my user case. If needed, you can choose from a host of RAID flavors, including RAID 6, which is even something that SoftRAID doesn't provide with my Thunder Bays. Now, this is an important note. To get the most out of your F8, you must populate all of the drive bays to maximize your throughput and saturate the device's 10 gigabit ethernet port. My Blackmagic speed test proves this, but in real world testing and use, what I've found is copying 100 gigs of Alexa footage to or from the F8 takes about three and a half minutes. That's around one terabyte every 30 minutes sustained, which as far as my needs go is pretty impressive. It's undeniable that the F8 when set up right is a very fast NAS unit for the money which is great news for Resolve editors using a Mac that are out of ports and want to utilize their 10 gigabit ethernet connection. Seriously, you could use the F8 as your primary network attached Resolve media location. It's fast enough and it can be populated with 64 terabytes, which for most small businesses is enough space. But for me, it's not. And this is why I'm using it as a live cache and timeline render location for Resolve. So eight terabytes is enough for me. And as these Resolve Live renders are disposable, RAID 0 is the perfect configuration. I don't need redundancy, snapshots, backups of the media, and if one of the drives fails, it really doesn't matter. For me, this unit's purpose is to alleviate the constant read-write pressure from my main soft RAID drive, speed up overall system performance, and reduce latency in Resolve on my M1 Mac Mini. And so far, that's exactly what this unit has provided. It's managing the live edit renders seamlessly. There's no lag when accessing very large raw media files, stills image sequences, or animation files when you're working in Fusion. Granted, a Thunderbolt drive would provide far better performance, but it wouldn't have alleviated the compute pressure from my Mac Mini's M1 chip. 
This way, the F8's Intel chip handles all the data compute tasks, and this is why I'm now getting better overall system performance in Resolve. I also now have more flexibility, more RAID system control, the ability to safely log in remotely, control over who has access to the media on the drives, and down the line, perhaps switch it over to a RAID 6 config. This is all stuff that neither Soft RAID or my Blackmagic Design Cloud Store can provide. And as far as I'm aware, the F8 in this config is the cheapest mass flash storage solution in this space. If I'd gone with another Thunderbolt option, there is nothing sub $1,000 that comes populated with eight NVMEs with this amount of IO, speed or networkability. For me, this was also as easy as setting up a Thunderbolt drive. Perhaps that has something to do with the install and setup guide TerraMaster provides. I mean, I just followed the prompts and done. It was very easy. Once set up and in use, I wasn't even concerned with the heat management because of the box's simple design, which has two large fans, comes with eight included NVMe drive heat sinks, thermal pads and rubber attachment bands that help keep these high performance NVMe drives stay frosty. But if you are ever concerned, you can check the live system heat diagnostics information via the TNAS app. Plus, you have full control over the fans in real time. So if you ever find them too loud, you can just lower their speed to a whisper. But in all honesty, I doubt they'll bother you. They are pretty quiet. In fact, I've set my fans to high and I can barely hear them in my office. Simply put, the F8's cooling system works really well. In all of my testing, including terabytes of large file transfers, the drives have stayed between 35 and 44 degrees Celsius, with the fans averaging around 1500 RPM. So overall, it's fast, cheap, doesn't cook itself, connects easy, is quiet, and is a great Resolve companion device. It sounds perfect, right? Well, like all products, it does have some cons. The first is that it only has one network port, and for a NAS, that's not great. Second, the NVMe connections are PCI Gen 3, which is a lot slower than the current NVMe Gen 4 and Gen 5 drives on the market. Next, each PCI lane is one by one, so to get the advertised performance, you have to populate all the drive bays, and this is where it could get expensive if you opt for larger drives. But overall, these are minor issues that for most Resolve editors who need a budget NAS that clients can remotely connect to, this is a steal. The F8 is so powerful for the money and it can handle a stack of different workloads, and I've barely touched the surface of what it can do. There's tons of apps that go way outside the scope of what I need, like backup software, virtualizations, dockers, you name it. It's a true NAS, and it's far better than my cloud store. But these are my thoughts, and I'd love to hear your experience with TerraMaster as a company or any other NAS devices that you would recommend for Resolve editing systems. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Swipe up, tag your friends, like and subscribe, comment below. If I make this follow, don't let this flop, wait till